uh, Bill, this is the final jobs report for President Obama. I would suggest you want to step forward that this is a constructive jobs report for President Trump as well. Yes, and I, I think a little schizophrenic, as you just pointed out yeah. in the last minute or so. Uh, you know, jobs grow, grow strong, but uh, wages revised down by 0.2 percent, and instead of 2.7 percent annual, now 2.5. I, I suppose that's uh, good for corporate profits to keep wages down, but ultimately we know that uh, it's consumers and consumption that drives the economy, and if they don't uh, earn enough money or if their uh, money is only growing at 2.5 percent, then that's a slow growth economy. So sort of schizophrenic right. report and I can see how markets might interpret it one way or the other. I want to bring this right over Bill to the bigger picture this morning again futures advanced down futures up 95 not near the 20,000 level but a, I like what Bill said there about a schizophrenic tape. Bill if we get a reflation from where you sit is it a reflation that gives us an inflation boost or can we actually hope that the real economy will boost with the Trump stimulus? Well, sure, and that's uh, the hope that uh, real GDP, which is now around 2%, and uh, actually for the quarter with the Atlanta Fed uh, above 3%, but uh, the hope is that we're in a 3 to 4% real GDP economy. That was the promise from the Trump administration. That's the hope in terms of fiscal policy and stimulation, deregulation, and so on that uh, we look forward to. I remain skeptical, I guess. I, I remain, you know, of the, of the camp that uh, the productivity is the key to real GDP growth. We know labor force growth is less than 1%, so it's all productivity. And what produces productivity? Investment. Investment hasn't been there, as you've discussed, for the past 30 minutes. And to the right. extent that it remains anemic, then productivity will remain anemic. And I think we're stuck in a 2% real GDP uh, world, no matter what the fiscal stimulation and no matter what the deregulation. One of the exogenous shocks, and folks, we have to remind ourselves that Mr. Gross, for decades, has had an international perspective where dollar dynamics really are, are there. Uh, uh, a key conversation, Bill, this week was with Barry Eichengreen of the University, University of California at Berkeley. And Professor Eichengreen was adamant that Mr. Trump will lead us towards dollar strength. Do you show up at every day at Janus just assuming dollar strength? No, I mean, the dollar's had a good rally, and certainly against uh, some emerging countries like the Mexican peso, a significant one. Uh, so I don't assume continuing, uh, continuing dollar strength unless, you know, the Fed stays ahead of the ECB or the Fed stays ahead of the BOJ. And, you know, at the moment, that's not the case. Both those central banks are still, uh, you know, s stuck on mm. quantitative easing of significant proportions, and that's led to the dollar rally, and that's led to stronger growth in the United States. But, um, you know, I, I think there's some catch up uh, coming uh, into the equation from Japan and from Euroland. Uh, their growth rates are close to 2% as well. And so, yeah, d dollar growth and dollar appreciation is uh, certainly not assumed. I, I don't think we have a, a new plaza accord ahead of us in which the dollar, right. the strong dollar threatens the global economy and we have to take some significant measures. I don't see that.